The incredible journey of one of the 500 most valuable brands in the world started in the farm fields of Western Denmark in the small town of Billund. It all began with a carpenter named Ole Christiansen. Ole faced a decline in work opportunities because of the Great Depression in the 1930s. This led him to invent wooden toys, construction materials that would become what we know today as Legos. In the 1940s, Christiansen started making toys from plastic and he hit upon the idea for automatic binding bricks. After some trial and error in the development of the bricks, by the 1960s, the toy maker settled on the design and plastic composition of ABS plastic, which is what Lego bricks are still made of today. At first, according to senior innovation director of LEGO's creative play lab, David Graham, the company started diversifying itself into a number of different things like clothing lines, food, theme parks, a whole array of things. And like many companies that overstretched themselves, LEGO had to pull back in the early 2000s when they realized their calling and DNA lies in playing with plastic bricks. As time went on, digital innovation wasn't always a priority for LEGO. This was because, through the 70s and 80s, the brand became a global success, but by the 90s, they were beginning to sink into trouble. In 2003, LEGO was $800 million in debt and almost went bankrupt after they invested too much in areas that they did not understand. What's worse is that customers lost sight of the brand. According to Graham, this was when LEGO saw the need to look at what it was doing and why it was doing it. It needed to have a clear mission. It needed to be LEGO, but not in a way it had ever been seen before. As a result, the company learned the lesson that bricks were not outdated, and so there was hope for the company. Today, LEGO's modern products remain just as compatible with products delivered in the 80s. They have also moved with the tides, instead of remaining obsolete. In 1997, LEGO launched its first computer video game that was based on its physical games. At that time, the PC had proven to be a powerful entertainment platform that was gradually entering homes. From Windows, it made the move to Mac OS and video game consoles at the end of the 90s and early 2000s. The company had also made the jump to portable devices such as the Game Boy Advanced Search Nintendo DS. LEGO's objective has always been to be wherever kids find entertainment, instead of trying to use advertising spending to keep kids from changing their habits. So if kids were playing on computers, then that's where LEGO breaks in to position itself among the available play options. Although this wasn't the company's primary business, the visibility helped the physical games to get better. Despite feedback from parents that it would not be a good idea to bring digital innovation into the practical physical building blocks, the company realized that such innovation needed to happen. And so they went straight to the ultimate consumer, which is the children. Through market research, it was clear that children love to play with bricks, but they also love to use the internet and other technologies. As such, as a way of integrating LEGO with the internet, the company uses a system called prototyping. Prototyping was used to test ideas quickly. It was basically the development of a non-working product and taking it to potential users rather than waiting months or years on a working prototype. And as Graham said, the method was a quick way of creating a learning cycle and getting the best ideas to market. As a result, the company took some basic bricks to match them with modern devices like the iPad and iPhone. LEGO has been releasing games mostly for iOS for years, but there are also a few available for Android, and all the games that are based on LEGO's physical games are free. In 2011, LEGO created its first integration between LEGO Bricks and a digital game called Life of George. To see photos George had taken, users had to build the items George built and take a photo of their own creations with their phone. By 2014, the company had released LEGO Fusion. It matched builds with virtual games like SimCity. And so, the success of these games proved that there is a balance between technology and creativity. 
Today, plenty of LEGO apps now blend technology and play. The company also has a video game called Minecraft, which is based on building virtual structures with blocks. In 2014, LEGO invested in high-quality movies. Their movie, The LEGO Movie, was a huge success as it was awarded a 96% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Also, it achieved revenues of about $468 million, with a production budget of only $60 million. For the films, the objective was to generate an affinity with the brand, especially with families who were the target audience. As part of their digital advancement with technology, the company has partnered with Emmet.ai. It uses artificial intelligence to transform LEGO and its fans into something more in what is called a master builder. Thanks to the popularization of 3D printing, LEGO has acknowledged that 3D printing represents an opportunity for the company. According to LEGO CFO John Goodwin, this technology opens up new paths and they are looking for a way to take advantage so that consumers can benefit. As such, LEGO filed for a patent that allows the customization of the 3D printed pieces. Because of its innovative use of artificial intelligence, LEGO caught the attention of IBM. The app uses AI visual recognition to identify pictures of objects or people and translate them into a LEGO model. It allows users to build using the existing LEGO collection. It can also help users transform themselves into LEGO minifigures. In addition to these digital transformations, LEGO has devoted its energy to innovation in toy manufacture. And robotics is one area that the company has been focusing on for years. They recently announced a project to connect its physical products to the virtual world of video games. Here, consumers will be able to build a structure and then take a picture of it with a smartphone camera to unlock a game based on the construction. LEGO also has an online platform where it invites its customers and fans to upload their ideas for physical products. And any proposal that gets 10,000 votes, the company will consider if it should be launched commercially. The idea is to allow the company to be in constant contact with its most loyal consumers and it helps to create a circle of fans because of the fans' loyalty and the publicity they generate. Financially, LEGO was doing great, but it wasn't until the COVID-19 lockdown that their digital strategy really took flight. As the pandemic pushed children and families towards indoor activities, LEGO sales soared. According to reports, compared to the previous year, LEGO's revenue grew by 7% to $2.46 billion from January to June 2020. It didn't stop there. By 2021, from January to June, revenues increased by 46% as consumer sales grew by 36%. In late 2021, LEGO announced that they would be capitalizing on the growth and entering the next phase of their digital transformation by investing in digital platforms, products, and ways of working. And this includes opening digital talent hubs in Shanghai, Copenhagen, Billund, and London. LEGO's transformation serves as a reminder that it is never too late for reinvention. Their journey into digital innovation uses its ecosystem of customers, partners, and agile methods. And today, as one of the 500 most valuable companies in the world, it is clear that their transformation and strategy are working. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel and press the notification bell so you never miss an upload.